Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us here once again for another episode of Secret Jews, where we are uncovering hidden Jewish traditions. Today's episode is the Italian Jewish name game. Let's go ahead and give our sponsors their due. Secret Jews of Calabria, wonderful documentary uncovering Jewish traditions hidden for over 500 years. To find out how to get your copy of Secret Jews of Calabria or host your, your group or organization host a viewing event, please visit RabbiBarbara.com. Call for Cal and Ibex Motion, documentary film as a key to our past and future. You can find out more by emailing Carl at C Percal, P E R K A L, at netvision.net.il. And Rabbi Barbara Aiello, Italy's first woman rabbi. You can find out all about Rabbi Barbara and all the wonderful services she offers by visiting rabbibarbara.com. And the William David Company, rethinking small business marketing since 2009. If you'd like to find out what your virtual engagement rating is, visit williamdavidcompany.com. Well, I would like to introduce your co-hosts for today. First, we'd like to introduce you to Rabbi Barbara Aiello. Welcome, Rabbi Barbara. Thank you, thank you, and welcome to all of our viewers as well. And our film's producer, Carl Prakal. Welcome, Carl. And I should point out that I'm in Israel, and I'm getting the feeling that, Randy, you're somewhere on the Jersey coast. Is that correct? Jersey, Jersey. Shore. Jersey, Jersey Shore. And Rabbi, I think I you're am, still, are you still in Florida, or are you I on your am. way? I am still in Florida, but I am just days away from going back to the mountains of Calabria where our film is set, the setting for our film. Fabulous, gorgeous, wonderful, super. I, I have a question. Are, are, we're going to talk about names today because I know in the film we talk about it and you've talked about it, about how, for instance, a tip, what we might think is a typically Italian name, Aiello, is actually an Italian Jewish name. So I'm going to throw one out to you. Um, you know, uh, uh, in the in the ethnic world of New York City where I grew up, if you found cross ethnic connections, they were usually Jews and Italians. Uh, my friends in school, uh, if there was intermarriage, it was usually Jews and Italians. And lo and behold, uh, after World War II, my father was a young attorney, and he went to work for. In those days, you went to work for. He was a Jewish lawyer. You went to work for a Jewish law firm. But indeed, when the law firm took in non-Jews, they were usually Italian. And my father's partner uh, for many, many years was Tony Ferrara. So now I'm thinking, maybe Tony Ferrara was actually Jewish. Could it be? Absolutely. Not could it be. He does have, Tony Ferrara has Jewish roots. Just like all of the Aiellos, the A-I-E-L-L-Os, that is a common name all over, um, all over the United States for Italian Americans, also has Jewish roots. And let me tell you a little bit about how we determine that. Uh, first of all, my own name, Aiello, goes all the way back to biblical times in Judea when the name was El Al, just like the airlines, and uh, uh, meaning, of course, translated in modern times skyward or to God. The name made its way to, uh, in the Babylonian diaspora, made its way to, uh, uh, to Spain, and uh, there it became Ayala with an A-Y. Then it made it, its way into Sicily, and since there is no Y, no Ypsilon in the um, Italian alphabet, it became A, J, we would say J, but that is called in Italian E lungo, long I, E lungo, and it would be A, J, or E lungo, E L L O. Then it made its way into the toe of the boot and it became A I E L L O. It is one of the, uh, one of the top five oldest Italian Jewish surnames in the world. So wait, so I have to ask, Danny Aiello. Well, has Danny Aiello is my is a distant has he cousin. To his Jewish roots? Well, I don't know. He, he we are related, Danny and I. So he certainly knows that he's got a rabbi in his uh, heritage. But that's a very that's a very good question because um, Danny Danny I am related to Danny through my grandfather and his father, but. Um, uh, we uh, there are many many because of forced conversions and adult baptisms that when Jews were forced to uh, to accept Christian conversion through an adult baptism many um, uh, Jews 
became good Christians. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you another interesting thing about names. I've had people come to me who say, I, I know my family has Jewish heritage. I've, I've researched the traditions that we do, but our surname precludes it. And then they tell me their surname is Lo Spirito Santo, the Holy Spirit, or Ayutami Cristo. Help me, Christ. And those, and I oftentimes say those are part of your story because when Jews accepted adult baptism, they gave themselves surnames to show that they were super Christians so that the Inquisition authorities would leave them alone. And so they adopted these names, Ayutami Cristo, which is a made up configuration. Nobody would have a surname like that except someone who was creating putting a few words together to get the Inquisition off their backs. Now, let's go to Ferraro, okay? Ferraro is a very interesting Italian Jewish name because the, uh, the ornamental iron, iron workers, the artisans, not just people who dealt with construction, but people who dealt with the ornamental balconies that you see in Jewish quarters all over Spain and Portugal. You see it all over Sicily because these ornamental balconies also traveled. The art, the um, uh, artigianato, the, the craft, traveled with the um, migration of the Jews as the Jews ran from persecution from Spain to Portugal, Portugal to Sicily and Sardinia. You see them bringing their craft with them. And uh, and so the, the Jews who did this were called Ferri, Ferro, Ferraro, Ferrari, and these all meant people who did ornamental ironwork. So, yes, indeed, wow, your absolutely. father found a law partner who had ancient Jewish roots. Unbelievable. Okay, I've got one more for you. My okay. um, family, well, anybody else who's watching this can be in touch with Rabbi Barbara and come up with these with these questions. So, my uh, my mother's family came from America. My grandfather came from Salonika, Greece, Thessaloniki today. And when he left, it was still the Ottoman Empire uh, in uh, northern Greece, and came to America in 1910. And then he brought his parents and his brother over in 1914. And I I've got the documents, uh, uh, the actual uh, manifest of them coming in at Ellis Island, which is another whole program of how you can go onto the website and oh, find yes. your your family, the Jewish families, Italians, Irish, Bohemian, from and how you know you can find the family there in any event. So the family name uh, is uh, Capon in America it was pronounced C A P O N. No E at the end is Capon. We would say in Israel or in, in Italy we would say Capon. And I thought, okay, they went from Spain. I thought it was a good Spanish name, and they would have gone from Spain directly to um, to Salonika. They were invited by, I should point this out, the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, which was the greatest empire on the earth at the time, uh, or certainly one of the greatest, said to the Jews who were being thrown out of Spain, hey, come over here, settle down here, you'll be protected, you'll be under my protection, you can do business, you can keep your religion, no one's going to force you to be Muslim, you can keep your Spanish language. So I just assumed they went straight to Salonika. But then I read, about, I was reading about the life of Enrico Fermi, who was really one of the great scientists of the 20th century and one of the people responsible for creating uh, uh, nuclear fission and, and the atomic bomb in World War II. And lo and behold, who was he married to? His uh, let's say his childhood or his young, his youthful uh, love affair uh, with um, Laura Capone, whose family was a well-to-do northern Italian family. Her father, Laura Capone's father, was a great admiral in the Italian Navy in World War One. So now I'm thinking, is Capone a Spanish name or is it an Italian name? And we, we, can, we can let you know, Carl, that uh, through our Italian Jewish Cultural Center of Calabria, the IJCCC, this is where we is a, the repository for all of the documents going back to Inquisition times that document whether or not a person with a particular surname, a family name, was persecuted for being Jewish during the time of the Inquisition. And what we know about Capone is we know that there is Capone, and there is Caponi. Now that that is the plural form. And many times, when a family traveled, when a family, a group of people traveled, their surname, which might have been Capon, 
became Capone because they traveled as a group and when they were registered they were registered as a as a family group and that's how you get the E and the I at the ends at the end of, um, of, of many Italian surnames that also exist in the singular like Capone and uh, we know that we find the name in, in, in Reggio Calabria the town at the tippy tippy toe of the boot and there are a lot of Capones there and Capones which means that to me that they did come from Spain they did stop off there they did put down roots and the people who stayed probably took on that plural form of the name and eventually when the Inquisition caught up with um, uh, caught up with the, the Jews of Italy might have made their way at that time to uh, uh, to Greece it's a, one of the one of the um, biggest um, uh, uh, stumbling blocks in understanding the traveling of families and also obviously the traveling of a surname is that we say Spanish Inquisition and when we say that we make the assumption that the Inquisition happened only in Spain when in actuality it began in Spain Spain and the Jews were persecuted, chased by the Inquisition authorities from Spain to Portugal, from Portugal to Sardinia, the island of Sardinia, the Aeolian Islands and the island of Sicily. Then the Jews were then pushed into the toe of the Italian boot and then they were pushed, as my family was, up into the mountains of Calabria which were practically inaccessible in the day and they still are to some extent as we see in the film today and, uh, and because Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand uh, were rulers of, of, of the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies or the Kingdom of Spain that started in Spain and ended in Naples, Italy. So the Inquisition was following Jews along the path that I just described and that's why people think that, uh, think for example that even though their name is, they can trace it in Spain, well why it, it, why is it in Italy? It must mean some, something else and it's because these were, these were Jews running from persecution. You know, Rabbi, in, in the film which we made, The Secret Jews of Calabria, it took a few years to make it, but I go back to it very often. Uh, I'm most moved by the stories of, of Italian Americans or Italian hyphens from other places, maybe Australia, other places, who basically revealed their inner soul to you and said, you know, something like, I always felt that there was something different about our family and our traditions and um, you know what we can take a look at a little segment of the film about that but I think you really I, in a sense you 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 saved these these people it's it's fabulous because you gave them something that they were looking for but no one else could help them find it I always felt like there was something there. I always felt like I was searching for something and didn't know what it was. And when I started going to uh, the synagogue in Florida and meeting with Rabbi Barbara, I felt like I had come home. Um, and it's, it's incredible. You, you think of the, the, the persistence of these traditions or language. In my case, they never lost their Judaism. The, the Sephardic Jews who went to Salonika built they were uh, for many many centuries the the majority not only the largest because right. you had in Salonika you had Muslims you had Greek Orthodox and you had Jews and for many many years the Jews were not only the largest group they were the majority when the also. Nazis destroyed the the Jewish cemetery during World War II in the Nazi occupation of Greece and they, they, they destroyed the Jewish cemetery they say there were 500,000 graves, Jewish graves in the in the Salonika Jewish cemetery. And my my point of the persistence is that my mother, may she uh, soul rest in peace, was born in nineteen eighteen in New York on the Lower East Side and was raised at the beginning. Her mother had passed away during the influenza of nineteen eighteen. So when she was very small, uh, my grandfather had remarried and had more children, so my mother was taken care of mostly by her grandmother who didn't speak English yet. She had just come, you know, a few years before. And she's only, I mean, she probably spoke uh, uh, Greek, but she spoke to my mother in Spanish, uh, Ladino, medieval Spanish. And, and uh, this was, you know, we're talking a span of 500 years. And, um, you know, it was as if they had never left Spain. They spoke the same language that they spoke yes. a little bit more Hebrew. 
It's incredible. One very important point to remember too is that prior to the Inquisition, uh, Calabria and Sicily were, were the populations of those two of those of those two areas was fifty percent Jewish, and historians co uh, corroborate this now. And so, um, uh, the, all of, half of the population forced into Christian conversion or taking their traditions underground is what we are uh, we here in modern day in our cultural center are trying to unearth and trying to uncover. Also, I want to mention to you, Carl, that when you go back to Greece, which I'm sure you will, you will see that there is a Calabrese synagogue in Greece with the Calabrians who established this particular synagogue in, uh, in Saloniki. And I would, I would bet, I would bet the, um, uh, the Rigatoni that you will find, you will find the name Capon or Capone on that list, on that, on the on Calabrese list, on the list, yes, the list of founders mm -hmm. which still exists so, on the building. So if I'm an, uh, uh, an American, I'm Native American, or I'm an Italian American, I'm a good Catholic, or not such a good Catholic, but I know my family came from southern Italy, from Calabria, uh -huh. from Sicily, what kinds of names, or how would I all of a sudden get a clue, what are names or other ways that I would begin to think, oh, maybe I do have a Jewish uh, heritage well, lurking um, back there somewhere. Rabbi, let me just jump in before you do it. Right now, everyone can see on their screen um, the page for Italian Jewish surname research from Rabbi Ella's website. You can go there. This is a partial list of what I would believe are many of the um, more common names, but yes. for those of you that are interested in this and want to pursue it to know more about your history, on this page, simply go to the bottom and you click on find out more about your Italian Jewish roots. That will take you to a form that you fill out and you submit it and Rabbi Ella will respond to you with further details on, on how to proceed. But you can see there's quite a large list uh, of common Jewish names that just when I look at it, I see uh, probably about two-thirds of the Italians that I grew up with, their names are on this list. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. And that's because the migration, uh, the immigration to the United States, I should say, from Italy came primarily from the most Jewish part of Italy, Calabria and the island of Sicily, also the poorest, which is one part of the reason why people made that, uh, made, made that, enormous, that enormous change. But, how many uh, Italian uh, immigrated to uh, America in the, well, in the great wave? In, well, right now there are, are uh, there are 26 million Italian Americans in the United States. That is half the population, the current population of Italy. And uh, um, in terms of numbers, um, I don't know, but that's a very good um, a good question. I'll check that out for our next uh, hangout here, and uh, and let you and let you know. But um, it it decimated some um, uh, villages in Italy because um, uh, the the poverty was so uh, so tremendous, and people, you know, people really, really wanted to wanted to get out. And there was a time when uh, when you could get into the United States with a sponsor and a job, and the and this idea of family helping family, which of course is also a Jewish tradition, family helping family. If when one person went, then fifty followed, and. Uh, they set up businesses. My grandfather was a uh, made coffins, and he didn't realize when he got to America that he was making Jewish coffins because the only coffins he made were Jewish because our town was uh, was began as uh, as a, a exclusively a Jewish village. So he got a job making coffins for Jewish funeral home because uh, Mr. Heiser said to my 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 grand my grandfather Pietro Iello, whose name was Pincus, but everyone called him Pinky when he came to the U.S., so he changed his name to Pete. And uh, he, um, he, they said, "Well, you're making Jewish coffins," and he said, "I'm making coffins." <laughs> and uh, all peg, no nails, all fit together, and uh, and that's what he did, and brought many, many more people from the village to continue the same work, the same work. Uh, Rob, I have a question for you. Um, and, and obviously you and I have, have spoken quite a bit, and, and when I, I said on a previous episode, if you talk to Rabbi Ella long enough, she'll have you tied back to somewhere your family comes from Italy. Um, and even when I said that the majority of my family comes from Romania, you said, well, you're probably Italian, because at one point, Romania, Roman, was part of the Roman Empire. That's right. What about... What about the names that aren't so, you know, like when we look at the list on your page, 
you know, they're very most majority of them are very obviously Italian type of names. Well, well what about what about those Jews like using me as an example that might have these Italian Jewish roots but don't have a typical Italian kind of name. My family name was Rosenblum. Well, probably what happened was that you had the family had a, a Romanian name that um, uh, was then 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 the family adopted Rosenblum because there was a way at a, at the t at the t um, back in the day uh, during the Austro-Hungarian Hungarian Empire that you could a Jew could buy a nice name and that's why they would buy Rosenblum that was a really pretty name so they bought a name that gave them a certain amount of status that was probably not your original name and the, the family name but the the Italian language and the Romanian language are very similar, and the reason is is that there was a lot of crossover a lot in in the language itself, and also the the Rome people, the what called um, commonly called gypsies, Zingari. Zingari is an Italian name which has Jewish roots, and the gypsy population has been, it has been determined, was predominantly Jewish, were itinerant Jewish peddlers. So there, and, and that's what we do, we, we maintain inquisition records, and uh, we have them and we look to see if a person with the name, the family name of the person who's asked us to do a research report for them on a, on a surname, we look to see if indeed anyone with that family name was ever persecuted for having been Jewish. And uh, and then we're able to tell them what happened to the family because eerily, eerily and uncannily, the Inquisition kept um, kept detailed records of arresting people, confiscating their property, torturing them, and murdering them in a public burning called an auto de fe, and uh, just the way the Nazis did. And uh, uh, and so we check to see if someone with that family sur surname was persecuted as a Jew, and then we try to see if the name traveled, because back in the day families did not travel except for very important reasons, like somebody was trying to kill you, and so when th if the name traveled, we look to see what the uh, what the traveling pattern was. We do not establish a bloodline, but we can tell you if families with your surname were ever persecuted for having been Jewish, and I will say this. In all of the people, the hundreds of people who have come to the cultural center to ask about their, for their surname, I have never f worked with a person who did not have even a minimal Jewish connection. And that tells me that the, that the little light in the soul, the neshama, the light in the soul, has never died. And that's why we call our synagogue, Ne'er to me del Sud, the eternal light of the South. Oh, Rabbi, I just have to say one thing, and then you can jump in, Carl. When you just said we're gypsies, I got chills, and I'm going to tell you why. My grandmother, who was to my whole family like the queen, she was, you don't get to be a better person than her. She used to joke, or we thought she was joking, when she used to say we were gypsies. And I thought she said that because my brothers like to move around the country, but I, I think there is definitely a much more deeper meaning based on what you said. Oh yes, absolutely. If you could go back, if you knew the town where they came from, and you could go back there and you could find some people who knew the family when, now of course with Nazi persecution decimated many, many families, And uh, but if you could find what the name was before it became Rosenblum, I think that would be very, very interesting for you. So tell me, Rabbi, what does the name, we'll, we'll see how much, how, how well you did in a high school in studying English literature. What does the name Deronda say to you, if anything? D-E uh, capital R? D-E capital R-O-N-D-A. Well, what that tells me right away is anything with the D-E, D-I, D apostrophe, L apostrophe, Lo, and La. All of those um, mean the, the person specific, or the D, D apostrophe, and D-E mean son of. And those are derivatives of Avraham ben Shmuel, son of, the configuration for making a Hebrew name when we, when we Jews had no last names. And we were Avraham ben Shmuel, or we were Sarah bat uh, Hana. And, and so the D became, from the, config, the Italian configuration, filio D or filia di, son of, daughter of, and then Rhonda. 
So that would tell okay. me right so away to now, start. Now I'm going to give everybody an, a homework assignment, which is to pick up either uh, from the library or on your Kindle uh, the novel Daniel Deronda, uh -huh. which was written by George Eliot, the great uh, 19th ah, century yes. English writer. Uh -huh. uh, of uh, I think we all read in high school Silas Marner. Silas Marner, and, sure. She wrote Middle March, and Daniel Deronda is what's called a proto-Zionist novel in which the story, Daniel Deronda, is kind of from this uh, uh, very British upbringing. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I don't remember the whole story. But as time goes on, Daniel Deronda discovers that he is actually of Sephardic Spanish Jewish heritage. Oh, I'm, indeed, going to, I'm going to read Arthur, that. You must read it, and indeed, it's one of those thick novels, so good luck. And indeed, the story, as the story plays out, he finds himself going to the Holy Land to try to rebuild uh, a Jewish uh, sovereignty there, which echoes the story of, you tell me his name, um, Dona Gracia, and she sent, uh, the I forget his name, who went to Tiberias, uh -huh. uh, also from Spanish Jewish heritage in, in uh -huh. I guess, Holland, uh, and went back to the Holy Land to try to set up a Jewish sovereignty. But read Daniel Durand, and maybe we can figure out, maybe Duranda also has some Italian Jewish connection. Yeah, absolutely. I will look to see what I can find in my Inquisition records as well. And I will encourage anyone who would like to know if their if their surname, their family's surnames, not just not just the um, uh, the the father's name, but the mother's name, grandmother, grandfather, back as far as you can go. If you follow the directions on the website, just click on RabbiBarbara.com and go to Italian Jewish Roots, and uh, there you'll see what questions to answer. And we'll tell you um, about the research that we can do and uh, give you an idea of, uh, of the report that we're able to give you. And uh, you can also go to the DNA sites. Family Tree DNA is one of them. Uh, Bennett Greenspan, my colleague, who was a speaker at our Italian Jewish Roots Conference several years ago in New York City, maintains the largest Jewish DNA database in the world. And uh, that will uh, help you uh, with bloodline issues as well. So if um, everybody's excited by this, I want to mention that you can go into Rabbi Barbara's website, rabbibarbara.com. You can click and see a trailer. I think it's about 14 minutes, so it's pretty long, and it, I mean, it gives you a really good sense of the film and get a sense of what we were doing when we worked together to create the one-hour documentary, The Secret Jews of Calabria, which indeed is available on DVD uh, through Rabbi's website and I'm sure people are going to be interested. Well, that was very, very interesting. Um, I mean, I, I almost think there can't be anyone watching that wants to find out a little bit more about their family background, whatever the outcome is. And I can tell you, I've seen the work that Rabbi does um, through the Italian Jewish Cultural Center and the information that she delivers, and it's, it's just really extraordinary. So whatever your reason is for for searching your background, I can tell you that you'll be very happy with the information. Um, make sure you also visit Rabbi Barber's site to order your copy of Secret Jews of Calabria. And I think Carl just gave us a second teaser of an upcoming film. On another episode, we got a teaser about uh, Secret Jews of the American Southwest. And I, I think, Carl, if I kind of listen between the lines here, I saw another secret teaser about maybe we're going to do one about this area in Greece. I'm, Absolutely. I'm good, um, I'm good. There, I'm going to book my ticket. It, it, gets, it gets worse because each story <laughs> leads to another story yes. and each story leads to another movie and each story leads to another novel. I mean, why did George Eliot, of all the things she could have, she did write about, why did she write Daniel Deronda? Somebody out there who's listening to this, do the research. Why did she write Daniel Deronda? Story, seemingly a story that was totally, you know, an unknown story, and yet, yet there it was. Maybe in a future show, I will tell you. Uh, well, I should say it this way: Rabbi Barber recently spoke at the Anche at the synagogue of the um, uh, new. Where are they from in in Greece? Um, okay, I got a block on that. But you spoke at their synagogue, and these are Greek Jews. 
Did you get the name? Uh, no. Uh, Yanina. No. It's, it's Anche Yanina. Yeah, that's it's right. It's the Jews of Yanina in Greece, and there are still some there, who are not from the Sephardic tradition, but are Jews who have been in Greece since the time of the Roman Empire. And they're, they were not Spanish-speaking. Their liturgy, liturgy was in Greek. And they are still around. And actually, one of my Capon, Capon cousins, was, uh, uh, who I still see when I go to Greece, um, her mother was from this Romaniot community. So it's, it's horrible, but every single story leads to another one and another film. So we can go on forever. Well, let me uh, let me do that for just a second, as one story leads to another. Because as I was listening to you, Randy, talk about uh, your grandma saying that you were gypsies, uh, there is a I have a woman that I know through the cultural center, and her name is Elizabeth Rome, R O M E, and she and I were talking, and she is Romanian, and she said that there was a time when her family took an R surname, and interestingly enough, Rosen, and that was her name and she said when her son went back to Romania realized the name had had originally been Rome R O M E which would have mean the Roma people is another name for the G the Jewish gypsies so it could very well be Randy that you took an R name Rosenblum the family took an R name and you you have those uh, you have those gypsy Jewish roots I'm telling you, I told my family oh. at Passover that Rabbi's going to have us Italian before the end of the year. <laughs> yeah, now where, where they went from Romania, that's another story. Well, we could help you with that, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. To well, that, yeah, Absolutely. Uh -huh. Well, I think that concludes another episode of Secret Jews, the Italian-Jewish name game. Uh, for those of you, again, that are interested in finding out your roots, please visit RabbiBarbara.com and you'll see the Italian Jewish surname in her services and you can move on from there. Well that concludes another episode of Secret Jews Uncovering Hidden Jewish History. Please join us again for another compelling interesting show where we will definitely be sharing some information with you that you haven't heard anywhere else. Shalom everyone. Bye now. Bye. Super.